Hey everyone, welcome back to the Cast and Spear podcast. Today we have somebody very special, Eric Anderson. You can hit him up on Instagram at Eric underscore J Anderson. Today we're going to be covering thick kelp and how to dive in it effectively. Welcome to the show, Eric. John, thanks for having me. Looking forward to the talk. Perfect. So, thick kelp, one of the banes of the existence of somebody just getting started. If you don't know the secrets, can you give us some of those secrets to make it easier? Yeah. Um, so the first tip I think is uh, you just got to be comfortable. Less movement is better. Um, fast movements, spinning around can get you tangled. So the first trick I think would be how do I, how do you make your effective duck dive? What do I do with my feet, my fins? Um, in open water, you can make a dive. You have no problem about kicking your feet way out of the, the water if that's you know what you need to do. Sometimes you want to use the kelp to your advantage. So that first step is making a dive. You can push against it a bit with your legs and learn techniques of doing more of a hand pull at the beginning to get your upper body down and without having to kick in the kelp. Because once you get your fins above the kelp, you have a lot more opportunity to get tangled. Um, if you have those back tabs on your fins, they can get caught in the kelp. If you're not using free diving fins or using scuba fins still or something like that, they can get really tangled. So I think that's the first thing is learning how to make your dive effectively in the kelp. From there, it's being aware of where it is around you. So you've made your dive, you're going towards the bottom. Maybe you're following a kelp stock. Is it getting tangled on your gear or your leg on the way down? So maintaining distance and just being able to kind of feel it against you, but not get tangled in it. You make your diver down at the bottom, you do your thing. As you're coming back up, same thing. Where's the kelp? Sometimes the kelp floors can be so thick that it literally is like every six inches is a strand of it coming around. Or you've got big rooms where you can kind of maneuver around it better. But when you come back up to the surface, you want to think about, you know, how am I going to get my body up out of here to take my breath? You're skyrocketing the surface. So, well, you're probably doing a lot of other things wrong other than dealing with just the kelp. So what I'd like to do is I come up and if it's so thick, like 18, 20 inches below the surface, six inches above it, you know, where the flies are going, it's matted, it's the heat of summer. Get your arm up and push it just enough to the side where I have my snorkel place tucked into the back behind my head and I can get it just up to take my breath, start my breathe up without having to come fully out of the water. And then once you're up, you kind of just position your head in place and let your body sink below you a bit. Typically you're able to be horizontal in the water. I like to stay more vertical and I've just become comfortable doing that. It sets me up for my next dive. My head's already in position to breathe, and I'm not worried about my body and legs getting tangled in the kelp. Because if you're at the surface and you have your body out of it and you start twisting around, you get really tangled, you get tired, your heart rate's up, you're breathing heavy, you get frustrated, and then a lot can go south from there. So those are the tips. That's what I have learned. I did not learn this overnight. This is seven, eight years <laughs> of doing it, but... Um, if you take it that way and take it seriously of learning how to dive in the kelp, it makes the experience that much better. These are all great points. This reminds me of when I first got started spearfishing years ago, I went with a bunch of guys to this area in Palos Verdes and it's a pretty big kelp forest. And I don't recommend ever starting your spearfishing career in kelp, just because there's a lot of other things you need to be worried about, you know, like proper mm -hmm. technique of maybe just even moving around. Uh, but I just remember just forcing myself through the top of the kelp, trying to get it, trying to catch up with these guys. And I was always wondering, how the heck are they just going so fast, like through this stuff? This is miserable. It's like I'm trying to wade through spaghetti. And it wasn't until I learned that, oh, there's like canals essentially underneath the kelp. You have these stalks that come from the bottom and that kind of makes the mat on top. And if you can just dive down a foot or two feet, you have this big open space. So it's like, try to be efficient. You know, you can hold your breath and go up. You might go into the kelp again, but you just go right back down. Then it just makes life a lot easier. So these are all great, great uh, tips. The big thing though, is also what you said earlier. It's being comfortable smothered, you know, claustrophobic. Like if you can get, it's, I find that kelp is really just a mental exercise. Like you can tell how bad you're doing in life <laughs> by how angry you get with the kelp in a quick amount of time <laughs> if you're if you don't have your mental right you're just like why am i here i hate this this is just annoying and you're trying to rip it off you but if you're 
calm, cool, collect, you know, A, that's better for free diving and spearfishing. But um, mm. no, these are great, great points. So when you said your snorkel, do you have it just like, because I know Ryan Myers, he has the uh, zip tie that locks it in place on the back of the mask. Mm-hmm. Do you use the little rubber thing that comes with the snorkel? Like how, how do you like to hook it on? I've got the Rive Stable mask. It comes with that plastic clip that kind of hinges. And then I've got the Rive mask, but you got the, the two straps that make up the back strap. I just clip it to that top one and it sits right in that little two inch section where it can slide a bit, but it stays kind of right up there. Um, and that's, it's great. I mean, you got to get used to it because you have to have your head positioned in a certain way. You know, it's kind of second nature now, but if you lean too far forward or you tilt to the side, you know, typically you have a little more clearance with that off of the side where it's like an inch or two more out of the water, but I highly recommend it. And then when you let go, you you spit your snorkel out when you start to make your duck dive, it, it falls right here and almost stays in the crease of your collarbone and your neck, which is nice as well, as opposed to where if you're coming up quick and you know, when you have it at the side, it does the speed wobbles. Like a skateboard when you're coming up, you start wobbling all over the place. It stays pretty tucked in uh, going down and coming back up. Do you have any tips for how to traverse over the kelp? Because I know there's been situations that I've seen, like for example, maybe it's pretty shallow, right? And you can't really go underneath it. So I've kind of found ways to, to get through the top, but I want to see if you had a, a way to do it. Yeah, the way I do it is I keep my gun tucked up so the butt is right here in my chest. And I've got it pointed directly in front of me and horizontal in the water on the surface. As I come up to kelp stocks that are perpendicular to me, I push with my left hand down as I'm kicking down and away. And they it pushes it all the way from my abdomen, my weight belt and everything else. And if you do it efficiently, you can get pretty far um, and move you know, cover some water pretty quickly without getting tangled. If it's too thick though, then you're doing a dog crawl and it's, you got to do the duck dive and get underneath it. But if it's thinned down enough, you know, you can get over the top like that. Yeah, that's perfect. I do the same thing where it's really just comes down to having that gun pointed at that like 30 degree angle or 45 degree angle so that it kind of wedges the, wedges the uh, kelp underneath your legs a little bit. No, that's great. And the other thing I would, tell, I would tell people when they, if you're feeling uncomfortable or you start to panic and you're like, God, this sucks, stop. Look at your nose. Look at the things right in front of your face. I guarantee you'll find a shell or a shrimp or some amoeba or something that is floating around where you'll go, holy shit. And you'll forget about everything for a moment and you can kind of reset. I can't tell you how many times I'm like, wow, look at that top snail. And then I'm like, okay, you know, you're catching your breath and this and that. Cause, or you could have a giant kelp fish right in your face and not even see the damn thing. <laughs> so it's like, just stop and look around and it'll help you out a bit. Absolutely. Another thing, cause I know a lot of guys probably try to record their, their catches and it's a little bit challenging in the kelp, right? Cause you could have the mask that has the GoPro, which I probably wouldn't recommend just because the kelp, for some reason loves the GoPro and loves to just kiss it and rip it off your face. <laughs> so having it on your mask just opens up water to flow into your mask. I usually have the headband. So if it does kind of pull, it's at least not, I can at least see. Um, do you have any tips around, cause you're an avid guy who records his, his catches. Do you have any tips around that for kelp? Yeah, I've switched. Uh, I've done the head mount and you have to kind of account for it. So when I come up and clear the kelp, I'm like clearing it up for the GoPro kind of thing. Um, I haven't done the head strap, and I know Ryan Myers and others do that. Um, also, because when you're coming up, it's not wobbling, kind of the whole thing of ripping off your mask. Um, but what I've done lately is I have uh, the GoPro, the little handle. And what I'll do is I'll put that with an additional float I've added with a GoPro, and I'll stick it up on my arm, kind of where I would hold like uh, my lobster gate or something while I'm breathing. It kind of hangs off to the side. And then when I know I want to make a dive or I've already identified structure and fish or something, I'll get it out and set it up and, and, you know, be conscious about my filming and then where I'm spearing. Like this latest trip, that kind of angle where I had 
the camera right next to the gun. That was with that handheld piece because I got tired of having it on my mask. I'm not just because of the kill, but just less is more, I guess. <laughs> no, absolutely. How about hunting techniques in the kelp? This is something like you've done white sea bass and this can be a little added annoyance, you know, like your line of sight always seems to just be a little less than you want. And that's can lead to frustration because you're just like, you're trying to look far away, but you always have random things like come right over your eyeball. So do you have any tips for how to hunt through the kelp? Yeah. Um, this is something I learned in the Marine Corps, but you got, it's learning to, to burn through the brush. So, I mean, you've got all that stuff right up your face and there's, there's layers of depth because there's a next stock and a next stock, but it's being able to see through and identify some shadows. So didn't see any sea bass on this last trip I went on, but the calicos, the majority of the good ones were sitting up right underneath the kelp or in the thick of it. I mean, you could barely see them. And if you weren't moving slow enough to just be able to see a fin or something, you would never be able to get a shot off. And so it's being able to just kind of slow down and identify and it's building a pattern in your brain. Like that's kelp, that's not kelp. But then uh, for central crows quickly, um, move slow, slow down. If you think you're moving slow, go slower. Um, I can't tell you how many times I come around the kelp stock and I'm moving a little fast because I'm looking to the next thing and I spook a solid, you know, lingcod or something that was just sitting by a little hold fast. Um, as a piece of cover. So just slow down big time. That's a good point about the calico. I've just noticed that the small ones are the ones who seemingly like to mad dog you. So they're the ones who are out just kind of staring you down. So if you feel like you want to shoot one, just know that it's probably small. <laughs> the big ones are really tucked up. And sometimes you'll just be like, whoa, where did you come from? You really blended in, but you're a big boy. And then, but. Biggest calico I've ever seen was last winter at Santa Cruz Island and I came up not even seeing it and right next to my head I just felt the woof, 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 as he disappeared and that one was big I was that was heartbreaking <laughs> it's all good you'll go get him is there anything else about kelp that people have asked you that you want to cover right now uh one last thing I'd say is just uh, remember the stuff breaks easy so if you do get tangled take a moment you know, sure, you can try to get your knife and do the cut and everything else, but if you just slow down, reach down, feel where it is, do a quick hand wrap and pull, you can break it, get it in both hands and pull, bite it. I mean, it's kelp, so you can bite right through the stuff. <laughs> and you get your veggies for the day. No, that's that's perfect. I think you just gave us a like a pure kelp clinic right now. I wish I had this a long, <laughs> long time ago, so thank you for that. So guys, tomorrow we're going to be cover, covering how to shore dive through rough conditions. So you're going to want to listen into that. So hit up Eric at Eric underscore J Anderson on Instagram, and we'll see you tomorrow. Dive safe, everyone.